Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. Now get the cards, the charts, from my generation, I'll take the To Super City. Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of the Supla. I'm Carmen Antonelli, and with me is Sam Brooks. How's it going, everybody? We're here to talk money in the bank. Yes, we are, and also with us is Liam Dunn. I lost two pounds on my fucking bet. Oh, whoa, Sunday is night. me. Right? I mean, I'm still in profit, but that was the one time. Spoiler alert. That was the one time I wanted Roman Reigns to win because I had fucking money on it. I was that certain that he was going to win and then and then they just fucking tipped everything on his head. For yeah, fuck's they sake. Yeah, did. That's For why it's called sake. gambling. It uh, yes, but WWE is supposed to be a sure thing, so that's why I put money on it. No, it's, like, it's oh, better when it's not a sure thing. thing. Shut up, Liam. <laughs> it's so predictable that you may as well do it. It's like, yeah, oh, they yeah. did, and it was good. So shush. Yeah, but who, who, who didn't see Dean Ambrose winning Money in the Bank? Who I didn't did, see that? I did think it was going to be Kevin Owens, honestly. Really? Yeah, I thought there was a, a decent enough chance it could have been him. It's not out of the question. Yeah, but did the fact that both Seth and Roman being in the main event picture not give a hint as to then like doing like because it built up the Shield for. I mean, this whole Seth turning on the Shield has been a storyline that's been going on for about two years, and then the, the Shield's debut has been going on longer than that, right? So they've been building to it for a while. It was quite clear that this was the time for it to happen. Okay. Well, then, if it was so obvious, why'd you bet on Roman Reigns? Because I didn't think Seth would win. <laughs> But that's the obvious thing. If Dean Ambrose is going to have money in the bank, he's going to cash in on the guy who turned on him, not his friend. No, because actually, and again, oh. we're st- skipping over to Raw here, but in the opening of Raw, he said he would have cashed in on Roman. Okay. So He said that, but that was just part of the script. Like, of course he was going to cash in on Seth. No. I could have seen him. What day happened, on. Liam? So, mm, yep. <laughs> What's your point? I don't get what you're talking about! You can see why we don't do shows with us free. <laughs> you can see why Andy's always here, so that he can be the target for all of this mutual hatred we have. <laughs> but anyway, let's go yeah. right into it, shall we? Money in the Bank opened with the Fatal 4-Way for the Tag Team Championships with... This match should have had a different winner. Probably, but let's say who's in it first. We have the New Day. The Lord Villains, Ember Club, and Enzo and Cass, WWE yes. Tag Team Championship. The New Day retained their titles after, I think it was Luke and Carl hit a magic killer on Aiden English, up the Lord Villains. And then the New Day, in a really weird, botched segment, <laughs> kind of got Gallows and Anderson out of the picture. And then somebody pinned Aiden English from the New Day, I think it was Big E. Or Kofi, and then, yeah, they retained. Should they have? I don't think so. Mm-mm-mm. Especially with what they're doing now on Raw, which we'll get to later. But I feel like they should have dropped the belts and moved on to do something else because I don't know. They've, they've, I don't know. They, they've had it as long as they should. I feel like it's someone else's turn. They don't need the belts anymore to be over. You can give it to someone else. Exactly. Uh, I feel like either the club or Enzo and Cass should have taken it at Money in I like the Bank. how no one has agreed that, hey, maybe the Vaud villains should have won. I don't know. I don't know if they're quite in the spot where they could... Yeah, they're champions. That's perfectly fine. They're not there yet. It won't take long. Well, out, and out of all of them, they're the only ones that have been tag champs in NXT. Enzo and Cass were never tag champs. Yeah. The club haven't and... been champions in WWE at all, so... 
The thing is, though, their tag team run in or their tag title run in NXT was really lackluster. Well, at least they had one. Yeah, but it wasn't great. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, the tag division in NXT has been pretty lackluster for a majority of that year. So, yeah, it was really. It's always been back and forth between like two or three teams. Yeah, really. But even now. <laughs> But uh, I, I would have uh, preferred if somebody else picked up a win because, as you say, based on Raw, they could easily do the program they're doing now without the belts. Yeah, it might actually be better. Indeed. Um, but I'm sure the match was fine. And um, nah, I don't hate the fact that the New Day retained. I still like them, so whatever. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of uh, botches towards the end of this match. Uh, there was a point where after the magic killer spot biggie rolled in picked up carl anderson but i think it was big Cass who missed his mark so for about two whole minutes you just had luke gallows staring at biggie with carl <laughs> anderson on his shoulder and it was really awkward i also i heard a rumor i don't know how true this is but i heard a rumor that that the wrong man was pinned, like an illegal man was pinned. I don't yeah. know if that's true. I think that is I, true, actually, yeah. I, I didn't go back and research. I haven't researched it. It's just something I kind of saw when I was on Twitter, but you can't trust everything that's fucking on Twitter. Because, no. uh, you know, otherwise a lot of girls would be trying to show me their pictures on really weird links that just don't, don't make any sense. So you can't trust Twitter. Um I don't know. I think I think you're being all you're all being a little bit down. Um, I mean, I'll get to my thoughts about the whole pay per view in general uh, later. But I mean, I don't know. I it was a bit of a mess. But the problem is when you've got a fatal four way tag team match, it's very difficult. Um, yeah. Now, it wasn't really mentioned last week, but I worked at the What Culture Pro Wrestling uh, tapings that they did last week in Newcastle, right? And I was surprisingly i was one of the cameramen i didn't realize i was one of the cameramen until two days before the event even started and i've told these guys all the stories about it um so i won't i won't go into too much detail but um i can tell you when i was shooting a triple threat match that alone of just three individuals was chaotic in of itself when you've got Eight, that's maths for you. You know, it didn't take me a second to think and add. Uh, when you've got eight people, it's very, very chaotic. And you've got to try and juggle four sets of different teams who have different gimmicks and different stories. Because really, the story... It, I mean, the New Day was feuding with the Ford villains who were also feuding with Enzo and Cass. So there was like a three-way going there. And then it, to me, it felt like they threw in the club just because... Oh, well, you know, they're big in Japan. We need them to be on the card. Oh, well, no, the club there. attacked the New Day a week or two ago, and they get yeah, they no, got no, themselves no. involved. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know, but it still didn't feel like a legitimate thing to me. Like, it felt like they just kind of threw them in there for the sake of it. I get I what you agree. mean. I gotta agree. But it didn't feel like a natural... Like, it's never felt to me like their, their goal is to get the tag team belts. Like, you look... Enzo and Cass, you look at the Vaude villains, their goal is to be tag team champions. I don't get that with Gallows and Anderson. They're just there to just disrupt the system. In my opinion, that's the way it feels. So to have them in the tag team match was a bit... I can understand they are a tag team, but I didn't feel like they needed to be there. I think this could have worked as a triple threat uh, tag team match in of itself. And you could have saved Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson to do the run-in during the AJ Styles John Cena match, which we'll talk about later, but I didn't think they needed to be in this match. I think that's fair. But yeah, no, the New Day yeah. picked up a win, and uh, I guess they're going to break the record again. Mm. Again, all those records forever being broken. Again. Hey, I don't mind. New Day. They're my boys. They're my team. Yeah, sure. New Day is still yeah, good. They're good. They're good. But anyway, next match on the card was, uh, oh God, Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler, round three. I don't care. Can we just move on? Can we just move on? I'm sorry. I've just I've oh, given up caring. The only positive thing is that it wasn't on the pre-show, which it was. It was advertised to be on the pre-show for such a long time. And it was like, this is the third fucking time they were on the pre-show. And I think they realized that. So they booted them off the pre-show and put the Dudley boys on um, because they're now relegated. I feel so sorry for them. They came all the way back to WWE just to be on pre-shows and job to everybody. 
Um, Still, being on a WWE pre-show would be better than being on a TNA main show. Yeah. I think there's more credibility yeah, to be had on yeah, a pre-show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you'd probably get more views, to be fair. You definitely would. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, um, I don't know. I don't care. This has gone on way too long. This is a feud that should have been like Baron Corbin's first feud that should have ended at Extreme Rules. I don't know why it's gone on this long. And I can't really even tell why it's gone on this long. Like, Baron Corbin beat Dolph Ziggler in his first match three months ago. And he's yeah. still pissed. Well, he didn't even do that. It ended in double count out. Like, the whole, the yeah, whole there thing's was been a really boring... Yeah, to go boring, on for a little like... bit, but it should have ended. Yeah, actually. I mean, there's reason for it and to my, go and on, my other for three thing. straight pay-per-views. And, and my other favorite thing is that I understand it was extreme rules and you had to have extreme rules. And I get that, right? But their first pay-per-view match was an extreme rules match. And then the two afterwards have just been normal matches, which is kind of the opposite way you book a storyline, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no, they had a normal match on the payback pre-show. Then it was yeah. extreme rules. Then it was... Oh, yes, my bad, my bad. Sorry, I thought Extreme Rules was first for a minute. Um, oh, it yes. used to be, but they changed it this year. Yes, they did change it this year. That's where I got confused. Um, but, yeah, they they finished their feud off with a normal match again, which was a bit odd, a bit odd for me. But Yeah, but uh, at, least, at least Baron Corbin picked up the win, right? Yeah, he can and the match move itself, on now. The match, I want to like... talk about the match itself. Oh, but, I mean, like, for Baron Corbin, can he move on now? Oh, right, yeah. Well, he has, so we're all good. We're all out of these murky waters of Dolph Thank Ziggler. Thank God. Right. The match itself was boring. I bet. And here's the thing about these two the workers. The crowd right? chanted boring. They did. The crowd chanted boring. They absolutely did. And it's down to the fact that Corbin works a lot slower than Ziggler does. Oh, yeah. And when Ziggler is... He works like a broken newspaper machine. that's just malfunctioning and shooting out newspapers at 50 miles an hour. Right. Okay. He doesn't slow down. Baron right. Corbin's a big guy that's naturally not the quickest guy. So if you can't keep up with Ziggler, the match is going to be bad, which it was here. Right. I've seen this being pointed out by other wrestlers as well, so why the fuck ever, guys? But, you know, at least Corbin won. I say that with a broken voice because I'm just so happy that it's finally over. Yeah, just be over. Just, just... be gone. Oh, God. And we can probably say that about half of the matches on this pay-per-view, including this next one. Women's uh, tag match. Uh, yeah. Charlotte and Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch and Natalia, with the match ending by Natalia turning heel on Becky Lynch. Why? Right. Right. Brian, Brian Alvarez. Alvarez. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce his name. That's his name. Right. He went on Twitter, and he said, and he posted a tweet, and he said, everyone, look out for a big surprise during the Charlotte, Dana Brooke, Becky Lynch, Natalia match. And I now think he was trolling. Either that or his idea of a surprise is really fucking stupid. Because a Natalia heel turn was not a surprise. In fact, it was a godsend because the girl's been doing basically fuck all. But it's nice to see a new refreshing take on her. Well, I say new and refreshing. She's been she's debuted as a fucking heel, and then she started farting on people. That was a bit yeah. weird. Anyway, regardless, um, the thing is, is that people who follow Brian thought, oh, this could be this could be um, Bailey's chance. This this is how she's going to debut. She's going to come out and she's going to help the baby faces fight off the heels. But no, it was just a Natalia heel turn. And Natalia, no offense to her, but. She'll probably be in the Hall of Fame just because of her lineage, but she doesn't. She's not done anything, as far as I'm aware, in the ring that's memorable. Like, so to me, it doesn't really like. I I don't know. For me, this just was so anticlimactic, and I was expecting a bigger surprise when there was a, when Alvarez said that there was going to be a surprise, and I was really thoroughly disappointed that all it was. And fucking poor Becky Lynch. Everyone turns on her. I feel sorry for her. She's yes. basically Sting. <laughs> yeah, she's the sting of the women's division. Because what we need now is for her to don face paint and beat the shit out of Natalia with a steel bat. Yes, that's what we need. You know what? I'd actually, I would mark out for that. Everyone, I'm not, even, I'm not even joking. Yeah, but you know, fucking Paige turned on her. Um, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte turned on her. 
Natalia. Uh, Natalia's turned on her. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess this is comeuppance for her turning on uh... Bailey. No, didn't Sasha turn on? Didn't yeah, she turned on Bailey, and then didn't Sasha turn on her in NXT? Uh, um, I think Sasha turned face. No, yeah. Well, no, in NXT, Becky turned face against Sasha. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, That's this is this is comeuppance for turning heel on on Bailey three times for comeuppance. Three <laughs> fucking times. Like I like Bailey, but this doesn't. She doesn't need to be punished this much because she turned on Bailey once a couple of years ago. Like, come on. Anyway, that's that's my rant over. I don't, I don't care. It was a nothing I'm match, sorry. basically. This this was done purely to give the women a spot on the pay per view. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't have had a spot. I'm just saying you could have done something so much better. Yeah. And the other thing as well is that. I, I think there was a streak going on that that would have been like the twelfth successful Divas defense on on pay per view or something. I don't it know if that's been, it. Would have been the uh, the yeah. long the longest line of consecutive title defenses in the women's division for like ten twelve years. I don't think that record is about title defenses. I think that's just about victories for women. No, no, it is about title defenses. She has victories for women doesn't make sense long. because a woman a woman always wins in a women's match, Carmine. No, but the same woman <laughs> at being Charlotte, idiot. <laughs> the undefeated streak of being Charlotte for twelve straight pay per views. She that wouldn't be her twelfth title defense. No, it she wouldn't. didn't win it at Money in the Bank last no, year. That's that's why I said it's the twelfth defense of the women's championship or divas championship because there was Nikki Bella. Yeah. No, the record I heard I believe was, this was about to... Charlotte specifically. We didn't research oh, this some... one. Clearly. I'm pretty sure There's it was about Charlotte's record. victories. Because it was, I, me- I remember well, specifically, it said, like, she's the only person that's won 12 times in a row since her debut on pay per view. It was a streak well, that was broken. There was, it was... And if Andy was here, he would turn this into himself as per usual. Right. So, um, I don't know. I don't I, look. I'm sorry. I don't understand the appeal of Dana Brooke, right? I like, never no. have. Oh, I, I like. I do. Hang on. I mean, I, I liked. Do, but... I, I thought she was an interesting persona on Breaking Ground, but she's just she's Charlotte's lackey, and this doesn't make sense. They feuded in NXT, and then they're just suddenly friends, and she comes well, out like... dressed as Ric Flair, and then that's it. She's debuted on the main roster. And to me, she's not done anything. Like, regardless of what you say about the Divas Revolution that happened last year, which was fucking tragic in, in, in all fairness. But the fact of the matter is, is that Charlotte made a statement. Becky made a statement. Sasha made a statement. Dana Brooke is literally just uh, Charlotte's best mate. And that's it. That's the way I see it. Like she well, That's what she's me- always been. In NXT, she was that with Emma. Yeah, but there was a chance for her to do something, and I feel they've dropped the ball, and that's why I don't really see the... I, I don't see why why they think of her as a big character. Like, they're saying that she could be the next big women's wrestler, and I don't see it. I don't, because she's not made a debut. NXT, whilst canon, is still a different beast, right? There was was a chance for her to make a real impact on the main roster and it didn't happen and I don't find her a compelling character I don't think I've seen enough of her in the ring because she's a, she's mainly in tag team matches or she's managing Charlotte right I mean that, it. that's just my opinion that's they have dropped opinion. the ball on her I will say but it's only because Emma got injured right she was going to be with mm-hmm. Emma and they were going to have a run through the Divas Division, Women's Division, whatever it's called. It's a force of habit. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were going to run rampant, and it would have been something. But no. And they got the back injury. She was put out. Put it with Charlotte because she's the biggest heel in the Women's Division right now. Might as well pair them together so that Dana can get some traction off of that. Only problem with that is, is that they've not booked her into enough matches for people to take notice of her. She's just there. She's an accessory to this Charlotte dynasty, which is proving to be monotonous and boring by now. Yeah. Unless they turn on each other and then Dana takes the title, whatever, that would be fine. I would wait until Emma comes back and then... There's not even a timetable return for Emma, so you can't really work But I mean, for not even for Charlotte to lose the belt. She can lose it and still have Dana. 
I mean for Dana to turn on Charlotte because what I would do is have Emma come back, debut on the main roster as who she is now, um, and confront Charlotte, and then Dana turns on Charlotte so that you kind of have Charlotte turn face as a result, and then you have Emma and Dana versus Charlotte. That would be good. If only well, Emma had a timetabled return. I mean, yeah, like I said, get the belt off of Charlotte sooner than that, but keep Dana right. with Charlotte. Yeah, sure. Until then. I can see that. But, you know, I, I like Dana Brooke. I like what I've seen. She's very she's vastly improved from her debut, which is why she's on the main roster now. But it's not like it's not like she's Apollo Crews or anything. Like, she's actually shown growth and progress. <laughs> but... Well, yeah, in the ring, which has never been Apollo's problem. His problem is that he has no personality. Well, Dana Brooke has a personality, but it's the, it's the same limited personality that you give to any heel female yeah. at this point, right? But no, 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 no. I disagree with Carmine. Actually, I think Apollo Cruz does have a personality. He has the he has the personality of soggy paper. Do you know what I mean? Like, just that's the best way to kind of put together. Into a neat little bow of you know what, what his personality is. You can is. actually describe Apollo Cruz's personality with a picture. Get one of those big posters of John Cena smiling with his hand up near his face, and that's Apollo Cruz's personality. I, I don't even think it's. I, I don't even think it's that. I think Cena is at least he's a good talker. I think. I well, no, I'm not me, saying he has the personality of John Cena. I'm saying he has the personality of that still image of John Cena. Oh, the John Cena poster. Oh, okay, yes. Ba-da, yes. Ba-da. Uh, yes, while soggy. Yes, definitely. <laughs> the Just, wet John Cena poster. <laughs> Just a dripping piece. Never say, never say wet John Cena again. Please. The moist John <laughs> Cena poster. That's, that's even worse. That's Good. even worse. Jesus Christ. Okay, anyway. So get off of this homoeroticism for a second. <laughs> Thank you, Carmine. Well. Let's move on to Apollo Crews versus Sheamus. Oh my god, this match. What was uh, this match? This was a pay-per-view match that actually happened. It's the this soggy match. poster versus Rocksteady. Yeah. It was an actual match that, that was actually on pay-per-view that people actually paid for. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. Like, I didn't look, pay for it. I got it out of a free month. I don't feel bad at all. I didn't even watch it. Right. Shh, let me, let me don't tell nobody. Brilliant. That's fucking oh. brilliant, Carmine. I'm going to review something I haven't watched. Okay, anyway. I know what happened, is, obviously. I'm talking about it. My point is... Apollo Crews is actually very good in the ring, right? He He has the physique and the athleticism to be... Maybe not a main event star, but at least an upper mid-carder, Right? I could see him being a very strong, like, intercontinental champion. Yeah. However, he is awful on the microphone. They pulled him out of promo classes at NXT far too early. Um, his gimmick is that he's just always smiley and happy. And aside from that, and I know the idea is maybe it should be that, oh, his actions speak louder than words. But that only works for a, a heel for a baby yeah. face, and he comes out smiling, happy. Oh, yeah, look, I'm going to beat up an Irish man. Like, it doesn't really work for me. And it's, he's got, there's no interest. There's nothing that I find interesting about that character. You know, if you were, I always, I, you know, I think um, Max Landis always said that the, where they dropped the ball with someone like Roman Reigns is that he started speaking, and he should have been, just this unstoppable fucking force. Like, he shouldn't have said anything, right? If someone comes out and cuts a promo, he doesn't start talking to them on the microphone. Hey, man, congratulations on, on the last night wins. Yeah, great, Roman, brilliant. With that uh, same level English. English skills. Yes, yeah. right? Shouldn't do that. He should just come out and just fucking spear people. Like, he should just be this, like, ruthless character. And I feel like they could have done something similar with Apollo Crews. But no, they went with the happy-go-lucky. I'm just so fucking overjoyed to be here right now, everyone. Because you know who else had that, that gimmick? Rocky Maivia. Yeah, there's I mean, that yeah. there. But still, to play devil's advocate, that, uh, that character you described as he doesn't talk, he just comes out and he 
powerhouses people. Pretty sure that's what Bobby Lashley. I know Brock Lesnar. Bobby oh, Lashley, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. the guy that nobody the liked. Lesley. And then when no, he, he fought, still came on, the mic. he was bad. Well, yeah, because he can. He was like, uh, uh, "I'm Bobby Lashley, and you you like to fight? Well, I think you're a bastard." Yeah, great, Bobby. Brilliant. Yeah, that makes so much fucking sense. And let me say, um, his promos in TNA are no better. No, I Bobby Lashley. I've seen him. They're not good. Yeah. The thing is, is that's why I said that it doesn't work for a baby face because they tried to do that and it was a baby face and it doesn't work. Right. That's why I said they could have done Apollo Crews so much different. And I think Apollo Crews, like, his transcendence into the main roster was one, way too soon, and two, an example of the ballad of the indie talent, right? Because when you're in the indie circuits, you don't need to be great on the mic. Sometimes... Just being a good athlete is enough. Yeah. Look at Willow Spray. Setting the world on fire right now. Has he cut a promo? No. He doesn't do that. No. And it's like, you could have just kept him down a little while longer in NXT to maybe, instead of honing his in-ring craft, you can do that, but as well, make sure he can cut a good promo. But something more is, than, I yeah. really want to be here and now that I'm here, I'm really happy to be here. Eh. It's like that's not that's not that's not acceptable when you have characters who are maybe ten times more of a character than he is. Yeah, the thing is, is that the the difference between something like WWE and the Indies is typically with the Indies, except for something like Ring of Honor. Typically for the Indies, it's kind of just a show for the audience, and they might be on like five episodes of one show and then not show up again for about three months. Right, so they're not a consistent character. It's kind of like the old developmental, not developmental, territorial systems. They just jumped around. That's what it is. Will Ospreay's been in Japan. A lot of people in Japan don't speak English, surprisingly. So him talking doesn't really make much sense. That would be like giving Kenzo Suzuki the microphone. Oh, wait, they did that at one point in 2004. And look what happened. Anyway, the point is, is that the Indies are a very different thing. WWE is... Basically, and Sam's laughed at me for this because he fucking did a mi fucking Mickey with Stone Cold's fucking body. But it's the Disney of the wrestling world. Everyone knows it. It's a recognizable name. It's a recognizable brand. And it has a hardcore following that people watch, not just weekly, but they watch fucking Raw for three hours, SmackDown for two hours, Main Event for one hour, Superstars for one hour. They watch all the shit on the network. They watch the recap shows. They watch fucking everything. Like... It's a much different beast to the indies. And that is why you can't just skip the promo classes regardless of whether you were successful on the indies or not. Someone like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens just naturally get it. They're naturally good talkers, right? Someone like Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, they were, again, both from the indies. They, again, just got it, but they spent a lot of time in development. Don't forget, someone like Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, they started off in FCW. They were there for right? a long time. Yeah, right? And how long has Apollo Crews been there? I don't even think he was there a year. Oh, and I think it was of... just about a year now. Like, we're approaching the year anniversary of him being there. Well, so he got, that's... like, the Kevin Owens treatment, which, whoa, he's not Kevin Owens. Yeah, like, to put it in perspective, Apollo Crews has debuted on my main roster and appeared in the company after we last saw Hideo Itami. Oh, oh God. Right. Oh. Yeah. I'm sad now. It's a long time. And it's 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 also a case for he, he just needs charisma. Like look at Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes he what? cuts promos on the mic in NXT and yes he can speak English. But he has the thick accent. So he's I don't not, think charisma he's not necessarily... is his No, I think it is, because Shinsuke doesn't necessarily have to be a good talker. He just needs to have that good sort of lightning-in-a-bottle feeling with his charisma. Cruz but that's the thing. That. Shinsuke Nakamura is very unique. He is lightning-in-a-bottle. I don't think it's fair to compare Apollo Crews to that. Well, I think I'm not Apollo... saying Hang that. On. I'm, I'm going to play further devil's advocate. I don't think, for me anyway, as someone who didn't know much about Shinsuke Nakamura until he debuted, for me, part of it as well is... His theme's just fucking awesome. Like, you look at someone like Shinsuke Nakamura's theme that's just so dramatic and epic, and then you've got Apollo Crews that's just, just like... Da, 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 da. It's like, 
No, I like Apollo Crews' theme song. Like... We're getting off topic here. Hold on. But no, I get what he means with that. But what I'm what I'm saying, I'm not saying that you can compare Nakamura and Cruz, right? What I'm saying is that Cruz needs a character. Yes, and yeah, that's what I was exactly. going to say. Charisma is not the problem. Charisma is not the problem. It's where he's putting it. Because if you look at how he wrestles, especially you look at some of his matches in NXT, the charisma is there. It's in his matches, but it's not in his promos. And that's what he needs to work on. He needs to find a character that he can funnel that charisma into in his promos. Because they insist on handing him a microphone. So we're not going to get the silent character. So as long as that's going to keep happening, he needs a character that he can funnel that charisma into. Ah. Hang on, I'm going to slightly disagree with you. I see where you're coming from. I know exactly what you're saying. However, I don't think it's a charisma issue. I think it's a confidence issue. Mm. Whenever he's on the microphone, it's not that I think he's lacking charisma. I think he's lacking confidence. I don't think he believes what he's saying. I don't think he believes that he can talk. And he can't. And I think he knows that he can't. And that's where the issue lies. I think he's got a real confidence issue. Yeah, he needs needs to go and see the school counsellor about performing in the stage play. (laughs) Before he gets no, you laugh. Joseph. But I'm genuinely. That's genuinely what I think. I know you're making fun of me, but I'm not, I think I'm it's agreeing just a, with it's... you and making a joke out of it at the same oh, time. Oh right, I thought you were taking the piss. No, I think oh. it's uh, a, a confidence issue. I don't think he's very confident on the microphone, and I think that's something that can be taught. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's actually might be the easiest problem to fix. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this match. Right. How was the match against Rocksteady? Uh, Rocksteady beat the shit out of. Uh... Apollo Crews, and then Crews rolled him up and won. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can get Crews some sympathy points. Eh, at least he won. All right. If Seamus won, I would have been mad. At least now yeah. I, can, I can't be mad. I can just be disappointed. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> set parents. Yeah, and the other thing. Well, the other thing as well. It wasn't just the way. It wasn't just Apollo Crews winning. It was the way he he won it. Yeah. Like Seamus was just completely dominating the match. And then Apollo kind of just puts him in a like a really weak crucifix pin, mm. and that's what gets the win. It was, yeah. It was. I doubt it was any stronger than that time Steve Austin broke his neck, and then pinned Owen Hart. It, it looked about the same as that. Yeah, oh. but I mean, it was it was just very anticlimactic, and I I don't think that works on not for me. I'm not sure if that works on pay per views. I think it works on te- on television. It can uh, sometimes in like a lower card match, as long as it's not the main event. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a bit of an iffy one. I think you're always playing with a double-edged sword mm. uh, with that sort of tactic. Because um, I think with a, uh, with a television show, my, this is my theory with it, my, with a television show, because it's a free show, you know, if you get something like a five-minute match that ends with a really weak pin, I guess you can let it off because it's a free show. Whereas some people like myself uh, and like fucking Sam here, uh, you know, you, I technically bought the show with the WWE Network, and that's the ending I got for the match. Mm, I don't really think very much of that, personally. Yeah, it's just yeah. an excuse for them to do a rematch at some point. It was, it was. But uh, before we move on to the matches that we actually care about, I think it's time for a commercial break. After these messages, we'll be right back. Everybody's talking at me. What? Hello? Hello? What? Hello? Yeah. The yes. Right now. Well, we're actually in a commercial break. Can I get anything? What? Can I get my thoughts on money in the bank? Go. Quick. I've got eight per- I've got eight percent battery. Okay, it was really good and finally do I'm going to champion that's great, hallelujah, and oh my god, this year they're actually crying again, oh my god, it's great, oh my god, great, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's Okay, bye. Nonsense. That was inaudible gibberish. Did you understand a word of that? I think I heard Ambrose at one point. <laughs> Ambrose, Ambrose, champion. Yeah, I heard Steve Ambrose, champion. I'm going now, bye. Thanks, Ambrose. Yeah. That was anyway. gibberish. <laughs> Let's read some comments, shall we? Last week, we talked about TNA nearly dying again, and how it could all be the end. And we briefly run down Slammiversary and the Encompass incident. It was a lot of fun. I nearly died at the end, myself. Yeah, it looked like a lot of fun. Oh, it totally was. You should have been there. But, uh... Mm. TNA defense lawyer Rebel Lunatic says, Now, normally, I would comment saying how TNA can bounce back and push on, but this time, I've got nothing. Ooh. I watched the pay-per-view when I was in Glasgow yesterday, and the only interesting match was Galloway vs. Lashley. 
Ooh. Not been, but I saw Slammiversary, I gotta say, fine. There's not much competition, but the, the least worst match of them all was the main event, but Rebel Lunatic continues. Sad thing is, I'm a Hardy fan, but the Full Metal Mayhem match was far too short, and was just a mess. The X Division match was match of the night. Yeah, that's a fair summary. See, I... I only kind of, I only watched the highlights on YouTube. Someone put up a highlight reel of the whole thing. To be um, honest, you probably took yourself a lot of time with that. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Like I've made it well known that I pretty much boycott TNA just because I know people are like oh, but the stories are good. No, then and then not. The stories yeah, so, are good, yeah. brother Nero. Yeah, that's the point, right? Like the, TNA fans are still like oh, but you know they have like stories. two good stories right now, and they're involving EC3 and Eli Drake, who are by default the two best people in that company. So regardless i i don't watch tna for, you know like it's just plus it's three, three hours like i spend fucking as as much time as i can try and watch wwe and there's like fucking 70 billion hours in a week that they fucking produce so it's difficult to try and spread my time evenly anyway um i watched the highlights reel and the one thing that kind of everything was kind of fine i didn't uh, i don't know about the the full metal mayhem jacket match that they did. Full metal jacket uh, match. Whether that was short. Yeah. yeah, I don't know like if that was short or not. But the one thing that stuck out to me was Abyss and Crazy Steve. I didn't realise that Abyss is now unmasked, which is a bit weird to me. Yeah. He's um, beautiful. Right, okay, so that's what it is. Mm. And then, okay, so trying to remember what it was, was that Abyss gets blinded, and then choke slams Crazy Steve, yep. and then they try and pin Crazy Steve, but he kicks out, and then eventually Decay win regardless. I'm not quite sure what the point of the bit where he choked Slam Crazy Steve by accident was. There wasn't. They just did it to give a false sense of hope that the Bromans would win the tag titles, which they didn't. But th- that doesn't. No, right? Okay. I'm not saying it makes right. sense. I'm, I'm saying that's the reasoning why. Yeah. No, no, no. Right. I'm I'm not a wrestler, and I'm sure the first thing that people really? say is, oh, "You're not a wrestler. You're not a wrestler. You can't. You can't do this. You don't know ring psychology." Fuck off, right? I know what you I like. You can't judge something if you don't do it for a living. Oh, f- right. Said the movie yeah. maker to the right. movie that... critics ever. What? No. Yeah, that 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 whole argument of you're not a ring ring wrestler, man. You don't know. Yeah, ring wrestler. That makes sense, Liam. Yeah, uh, you're not a wrestler. You wrestle man. You the know... ring itself. <laughs> you don't. You don't know what goes into a match. You're not Mark Henry. You don't know. Yeah, you know how fucking difficult it is to make a movie, and yet everyone will rip Batman versus Superman, R- whether it's regarded for whether it deserves the hate or not. People will rip on it, and uh, the majority of people who rip on it have never made a movie. Is that really fair in that case? It's not a two way street, mate. Uh, well, it is a two way street, but you know what I mean. Um, I don't, but move on, the whole please. thing is, is that I'm trying, but you're t- interrupting me, Carmine. Right? Anyway, so. Um, it's the whole thing of, okay, we're trying to create drama in a match. And you can create drama in a match without ending like a, a, a spot like that. Because that's kind of a spot where you would expect them to lose and then there's a turn, right? That's kind of... And I understand, oh, but it's predictable. We, you know, you were complaining about predictability. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense to have it. If you want a drama in a match, you can have them hit a finisher mm. and then just have Crazy Steve kick out at the last minute. When we complain like, about predictability, we want something different that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. We don't want yeah. swerves and nonsense. No, but an asteroid fell from the sky and hit Crazy Steve, but he kicked out. What? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. There you no go. No number? Cool. Yeah, there, there you go. Anyway. Also, I have a question, right? Oh, God. What? Do you think Matt Hardy freaks out a little bit if he goes into a Cafe Nero? <laughs> Well, being that he doesn't come to this country, I doubt it. Well, don't bring him over, because I think he'll no. have a slight panic attack. He might. It's like, Cafe Nero! I knew you were oh, Cafe Nero! Yeah. This must end where it began, at the fucking coffee maker. <laughs> I challenge you <laughs> to a full espresso mayhem match. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me. It would make just as much sense as what they did, where instead of the loser has to change their name from Hardy to something else, the loser then now has to work at Cafe Nero, and that's that's the stipulation. Oh, wait. Who won that Hardy match where the loser's not a Hardy anymore? It hasn't happened yet. What? It's going to happen at their next pay-per-view, which isn't really a pay-per-view. Oh, oh I, I thought, thought that was a stipulation. We're for in fact spoiling TNA for everybody, because it oh, hasn't I... happened yet. 
I thought that was that was supposed to be at Slammiversary. Yeah, that's what oh. I thought. No, it happened at the Impact tapings. Oh, okay, um, fuck it. Who cares? Anyway, next comment from Gabe Welty who says, "Serious question for you guys. If you guys mm. don't have the liberty to comment at this moment in time, I understand, but." What are your current thoughts on what culture pro wrestling? <laughs> I have no <laughs> The irony. I worked on it. I can't talk about it. But I can. I have no opinion. I can't talk about it. I can talk about it because I didn't sign an NDA. But Do for the you sake want of my... to? Well, I've, I've told you guys some of the stories from behind the scenes. You I don't, don't have to. You can just say no comment. Well, I'm not going to talk about it until it's aired. That's the thing. There you go. Okay. Uh, I've... These guys know some of the stories, but I'm not going to say it that will be publicly released until it's been publicly released. There you go. But based on what I've heard... Okay. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it, sounds, it doesn't sound like TNA. Thankfully. Which is the important thing. If it sounds better than TNA, you're already off to a great start. You're not global force, okay? So it's right. fine. But yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions on it. Final comment. Keep an eye out for me wandering around the ring. I yeah. guarantee I'll be in shot at some point. Yeah, we're actually invading what culture as we speak yeah. right now. I mean, very kind of, slowly. Very slowly at a glitch. Carmine's got over, over a million people have seen Carmine get scared by Chica. That blows my mind. Yeah. Put in a clip of that now. Or moving after everything's been shut down five nights at Freddy's style. Oh, God damn it! There you go. There it was. Yay. Yeah. How do you feel about that Carmine? Great. Bet you do. Have, have you been? Have you been uh, noticed yet? Have you been? Uh, <laughs> have you been recognized noticed? on the street yet? That's the word. No, oh my god! You're a guy what... from that What Culture video. Can you sign my shirt? <laughs> not a ton of What Culture and Super fans in Crystal River. I, I need. I, I will talk about some of the stuff that happened at the What Culture wrestling shows when they finally debut. Right. Uh, but there's some funny things that I will. I will talk about. You'll hear it here first on the shoot interview from one of the cameramen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, I, go I met YouTube. Adam Blompiet. He's actually a prick. <laughs> Great. Anyway, uh, we got a comment here from uh, Supla in the Bank live stream. Hey. I know some of you had technical difficulties watching this, and if you did, I'm so sorry. It wasn't our fault. So anyway, oh, God, no. Comment from Bieber has no wiener, which says, "Here's a question for me, Sam. Hello. Who's more bipolar?" Stephanie McMahon or Andy? Didn't Andy say he didn't know what that means? Probably. <laughs> Knowing him, he doesn't. But That's a good start. Uh, they're both bipolar for different reasons. But from the expert opinion of myself, it's Andy. It's always Andy. The it's answer always is always Andy. Andy. The answer is always Andy, unless the answer is who's had sex recently. Mm -hmm. Unless the question is who's had sex recently. That's what I said. Okay. Yeah. Fuck off! D d you first! Douche! <laughs> Fucking asshole. Fucking twat. Everybody's talking at me. John Cena versus AJ Styles. Match of the um, year. Jeez. Up until the end. Yeah. Yes. The end ruined it. The end ruined it. And for those who don't know, you had a really, really good match, right? It was I'm super sure good. Did. Uh, basically, the story within the match was that AJ Styles was basically countering everything John Cena did. Had a, he had a suitable counter for every of his big moves, all of the five moves of Doom. Cena couldn't do anything. So it was a battle of the equals, essentially. Right. You got to a point where, uh, towards the end of the match, you had the referee take a bump, and he was knocked down, both men down on the mat. And then the club come in and hit the magic killer on John Cena. AJ pins Cena. Referee doesn't see anything. One, two, three. AJ beats Cena. I mean, yay, but boo. Yay, but AJ won. Boo, <laughs> yay, but, but he boo. needed the club. Yay, but yeah. boo. Yay, but boo. Because there was a segment on Raw the week, or last Raw before Money in the Bank, um, where Cena gave AJ two options of contracts to sign. You can either sign the one where it says... You fight me and the Bullet Club is at ringside, or you fight me by yourself, they're not allowed to be there. And he signed the one where he's by himself and they're not allowed to be there, and then they showed up anyway. Well, to be fair, they are heels, for one, so it makes sense for him to go against his word because he's a bad guy. 
Sure. AJ Styles. Number two, AJ was down at the time. Who's to say that Gallows and Anderson did not act independently? And that's the excuse they went with on Raw. Which is, yes. Yes. It could be a perfectly valid reason, but I understand why, myself included, people are not happy with this, because can AJ just go over Cena without any fuck finishes? Can he just win one match by himself? (laughs) Can he do that? I know he beat Jericho at Fastlane, but so far that's his only pay-per-view victory other than this one. Yeah. Right? You gotta give him a bit of credit. It's AJ Styles, for God's sake. But other than that, I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was pretty great, and I look forward to the uh, future that these two are going to have right up until SummerSlam. Yep, Hopefully. and the thing is, uh, people complain about AJ Styles' promo work, and based what? on this most recent Raw, I'd say, at least as a heel, his promo work's gotten a lot better. Well, yeah, because he was a heel in Japan for about two years, so he's had time to practice. Yeah. He's, he's very good on the mic as a heel. He's fine now. He's a goofy baby face whenever, whenever he's on the mic anyway, but when he's a heel, he does good. And I like this yep. match. Yeah, I'm sure. Liam, what do you reckon? I liked it as well. Great. <laughs> not much else to say. Well, there's no, you've basically knocked everything on the head. Like, I yeah. have nothing really else to add. Cool, we're in agreement. This is weird. Yeah. Moving on to the uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. It was Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho versus Del Rio. Archery was right in there. Cesaro was there. Did you uh, say Sami Zayn? Yeah. Stardust. It was Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Dean Ambrose, Cesaro, Jericho, and Del Rio. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Dean Ambrose won. Yay! Yay! Well, he won. Did I? I've, yeah. It's obvious, kind of. But, yeah, he did. He did do that. It was a great match. You know what I'm surprised about with the match? What? The fact that Del Rio did good things. Uh, he performed well in this match. He's not bad. No. And so, recently, in these promos leading up to the match between all of the guys, were fantastic. Yeah, the build to this ladder match was, I think, the best build to a Money in the Bank ladder match I've ever seen. The best I've ever seen. And I've been watching since, like, 2008. So, yeah. It was just super good build, and the match was a good payoff. Dean Ambrose won. It was just a great package. The only criticism I have is that it wasn't a big spot. Was there not? Well, when you think about Money in the Bank ladder matches, you think, oh yeah, Jeff Hardy killed himself that one time, or Shelton Benjamin ran up the ladder that one time, or Kofi Kingston used the ladder as a pogo stilt stick thing that one time. There wasn't anything like that in this match. It was like, they were setting up for it, they were like, the ladder was in the middle of the ring, and then you had the two ladders on the turnbuckles either side, forming like a A symbol, but they never did anything with it. They just fought each other on top of those horizontal ladders. And then didn't really do anything with it. I see. But there was a spot where uh, Zane hit a Michinoku driver on Owens onto the uh, side of a ladder. There you go. And it looked painful as shit. But other than that, there wasn't anything big in the way of major spots. Yeah, there was Del Rio putting an armbar on Cesaro on top of the ladder. Fucking risky. Yeah. Uh, There was. Popped his arm off. Would have been Mrs. Nesbitt. I think Jericho codebreakered Ambrose off of the ladder. Hang on, how how are we how are we not mentioning Cesaro jumping from the ladder onto the ropes and, and then, then uppercutting hitting... Owens? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. good. And then fucking just whacking Owens with a European uppercut. How fucking! In... I thought that was the biggest. Like that was the most insane oh, thing. Yeah. I've he never seen like anything a... like that before. He went on an uppercut spree as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he just, it was just a good match. It was a me. solid good match to end that big yep. thing. Everyone had their own moments and uh, with the, uh, the Ambrose winning and later doing the thing, it was great. But before you we can talk about thing, that, we'll get the... we have to talk about the death of the father. What? Rusev versus Titus O'Neil. Oh, United right. United States Championship. Uh... Well, was I the only one who got creeped out when Titus kissed his son on the lips? He did that. <laughs> Did you not see that? I skipped the entrances. Yeah, he kissed his son on the lips and it was really fucking awkward. Uh, it's when you say it uh, that it's way weirder. Uh, oh, wow. Well, just... mm. Look, there's just there's rules. There's rules with, with families. There are rules right? and you abide by these rules. This is one of them. Right. 
None of this. You don't kiss family members on the lips. None of this. Right? None of that. Uh, it gets weirder the more you no. say it. Yeah. Oh. You don't kiss family members on the lips. Stop saying it. It's just, I, I didn't think I needed to say it. Please but talk it about the match. Dead. Did he kiss Rusev on the lips? Yes, he did. It was he a very him. weird match. <laughs> Fucking kissed his son on the lips. Anyway, the match was back and forth. It was hard hitting. It was right very vicious. Lips. Stop with the lips. Oh, these fucking lips. Oh. It's not what Titus said. Fucking hell. Those just... On the fucking... Like, why on the lips? So oh. Rusev won by submission on Father's Day, and he... He I demonstrated... Now after that. Fucking... He demonstrated his Herculean promo work by going over to Titus O'Neil's kids afterwards and being like, Hey, you see your father? He is a loser. <laughs> Happy Father's Day! <laughs> And not to mention the fact that one of Titus's kids just slapped him on the tip before he went. Just went out of his yeah, way. So. It was just like... <laughs> smacked him. No one talks no. about that enough. That's ballsy. You just saw your dad die in the middle of the ring by this kids stout got... Bulgarian brute. Kids got guts. And you want to give him a knife-edge chop Next from the height. Next is going to be Rusev versus Titus O'Neil's son. Rusev versus... I don't know, whatever... It's kid's name is junior o'neill o'neill jr there you go. yeah there you go titus for second right on the fucking lips stop with the lips stop. what's the next match Roman Cut. reigns kissed seth rollins on the lips it sounds like some weird fan fiction now. it is fan fiction now oh no this match was great i'm sh- yes i loved this match Especially because it ended the way people didn't think it was going to end. Roman Reigns lost clean. Clean! Match end came when Roman Reigns put Seth Rollins onto the outside. Uh, Roman Reigns tried to sneak up on him and spear him through the barricade. Rollins ducked out the way. Reigns speared the barricade. Uh, Rollins got him back in the ring after fucking about with the doctors for a couple of minutes. Uh, Hit a pedigree, I think, and reversed a spear into a pedigree. Yeah. And then pinned Roman Reigns clean. Fun fact. First time Roman Reigns has lost clean since 2012. Oh, fucking hell. First time he's lost clean on the main roster. No. First time he's been pinned in a singles match since he faced Adam Rose in FCW. What? Yep. Yeah. No. Not kidding. Look it up. That's awful. That's worse than Cena. Yep. Holy shit. That's like Sam Martin. Wow. <laughs> right? But yeah, Whoa. that happened. And then, two minutes later, Dean Ambrose cashed in, hit him, hit Rollins in the back of the head with the case, schmuck, pinned him in nine yeah. seconds. Yeah! Carmine's a bit too happy. Yeah! My boy! Am I the only the one? Am, am I the only one who finds it very weird to think that Roman Reigns is a three-time world champion? Soon yeah, because they do that stupid match. shit where they like took it from him after a while. It's like Brian's like a two or three time world champ too, but yeah. you don't you only remember the one. Yeah, yeah. Like I um, find it, I find, and Seth's a two time champ now, and Dean's a one time champ. Unless you count that time that he pinned Seth Rollins at an elimination chamber event, and then the decision got reversed. Mm, I thought that was probably I thought, shouldn't hang count. On. No, I thought that was fast lane. Not fast lane, roadblock. No, that was. Oh. I swear that was. Yeah, that was. It was elimination chamber. No, the, Seth Rollins yeah, versus yeah. Dean Ambrose. That was, Ambrose that was a dusty him. finish. Dusty finishes yeah. don't count towards title reigns. Right. No, obviously. But and they, and like... the, they did it with. They did it at roadblock. Dean Ambrose looked like he won the WWE title, and then there was some sort of reversal. Yeah. So triple well, H. Well, that returns. happened too. Probably. I'm so but... glad finally it, it it was it happened. Yeah, it finally happened. He John did the Moxley. Thing. John fucking Moxley is the WWE champion. I saw these amazing. There pictures. is. There is. Uh, on Tumblr, there is um, um, uh, go, Liam. There is a. Uh, I, I'm just. I want to bring it up just because it's Andy. Talk. And and I I, I want to make fun of Andy Ross. Talk. There was an episode of the Supla about five years ago, when it was revealed that John Moxley had been hired by the WWE, and Andy, in his ever wisdom said that he would go nowhere because they gave him the d- the name Dean Ambrose. 
Okay, if that episode is in your archives, please upload it as the next Retro Supla. Please do. Yes, I will. What is his I name? Will, yes. Ambrose? Is that not a custard brand in this country? <sighs> he, he will get future in Devon within like three months. Of Dean Devin. Custard. Right. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say is I saw this awesome group of pictures on Tumblr of Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose all in the Indies. And Roman Reigns looks almost identical because it wasn't that long before he was in fucking FCW. But he has this little, like, tiny indie championship. There was a picture of Tyler Black with the Ring of Honor title. And there's a picture of fucking John Moxley looking drunk in a chair with the CZW championship with one, one eye open. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all three of these guys were WWE champions, and that's pretty great. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when, I think, when the Shield was still a thing, Either in character or in a interview, Seth said, "Whether we're friends or against each other, we'll be running this business." Oh yeah, and, and it's the fact I'm... that since 2015, the Royal Rumble 2015, each title match has had a member of the Shield in it. Yeah, each, awesome. each televised, each televised. Yep. Uh, championship match. Yep. Yes. Shit, it'd probably be even further back than that, wouldn't it? Lesnar and Cena were involved in 2014, and then Rollins got involved towards the end of 2014. Then, yeah, it was mostly Rollins for 2015, and then you had Reigns pick it up towards the end of 2015. Yeah, it works. There was never a time that there wasn't a member of the Shield. It was always either Reigns, Rollins, and now more recently Ambrose. Yes, and that's awesome. and and Money in the Bank will be the only time because I find it funny because I think um, the thing with tag teams is that everyone thinks, and it's kind of I call it the Shawn Michaels effect. People look at a tag team and they're like, well, he'll go on far and he'll probably get dropped off and go nowhere like Marty Gennetti. Mm. And for a while, it felt like they were treating Dean Ambrose as the Marty Gennetti of the yes. Shield. Mm. Even though he's, by all and... accounts, the best draw out of all of them. Very oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I, lately I, I... that Ambrose has been drawing more than Reigns. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd fucking... I'd think fucking the ticket booth guy, if he was selling his own T-shirt, would get more than Roman Reigns at this point. But regardless, the point is, is that um, he would like, you know, you had Seth having like a, an eight month, nine month title reign. You had Roman clearly being pushed as uh, and groomed as the next John Cena. And then there's poor little Dean Ambrose, who was barely winning on pay-per-views had a run with the Intercontinental title. No offense to the Intercontinental title, but it doesn't exactly mean the same as what it meant back about 10, not even 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Co host yeah. of a year award holds more ground than that thing. Yeah. Right. Um, so it felt very much like he was being pushed as the Marty Genetti of the group. And who would have thought that in one night, all three members of the Shield would at some point hold the belt? Mm. Uh, yeah. It was great. It's crazy. Yeah. What did you think of a show? This show, that show, the other show. What did you think? All the shows. All the shows ever. Let us know in the comments below. And you can also uh, go to super.com where you have host biographies, MP3 downloads of the show, and what else, Carmine? The broadcast. There you go. What do we do on there? We talk about whatever the fuck for like three hours. We do. It's a fun time. It's basically just us hanging out. It is. Go to WrestPunder.com for all the latest news and rumors and wrestling. We're on iTunes. Didn't work last week. We don't know why. We've given up at this point. But we're on there anyway if you want to get some... Uh... Brocast is on iTunes. Brocast is also on iTunes. And that works for some reason. Because I do it right. I don't know what you guys do. Fuck if I know. <laughs> and you can also find us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And like everything we do. And if you missed any of this. It's going to be down there. In the description for you. Yes. Do something funny. What? The, the description. Such a such a great opportunity for a joke. Liam, tell a joke. Andy's sex life. There I you go. I that was, I, word for word, I knew that was what he was going to say. I've been Sam Brooks. I've been Carmen Antonelli. And I still am Liam Dunn. There you go. And we'll see you next week for whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever the fuck. Whatever happens. Is that the name of the show now? Yeah. Uh, what up?